previously on Ego Trips, the White Rapper Show. The MCs took their best shot creating their own music videos. But a whack concept. She is stunner. She love the way I blow cash. She is stunner. Put Sully, John Boy, and John Brown on the cutting room floor. Somebody has to be the fall guy for this. So here's your challenge to stay in this house. You have to write a 16 bar verse about your partner's faults. Sully felt like he was being asked to snitch. I'm not a snitch, I'm not a bitch, I'm not a kid, I'm a man. So he took himself out of the picture. So you quitting? Yeah. When John Boy refused to follow directions. See, well maybe this whole damn challenge is shady. You didn't complete that subject. John Boy, it's time for you to step off. Step it off. led to a double elimination. And now only four rappers remain. Who'll fade to black? And who'll step up into the spotlight? Up in the Bronx, the funky fresh place where it all starts. Hip hop, state of the art. You gotta pay you to get a piece of the rock. Hip hop, for one and for up, but so you gotta keep it real and make it big time, y'all. Especially if you're white. What I don't get is me and Sully discussed. We wanted to be the strong people in the end, and we said. Yo, when we go with each other, because we will, it's not going to be personal. So I couldn't understand why the f he couldn't go with nobody. I'm not a snitch. I'm not a bitch. I'm not a kid. I'm a man. I stand for what I stand for, so f it. So you quitting? <sighs> I have to do. That bow out, that bow out was wrong. Sully, I think he used the excuse that he didn't want to snitch just because he was tired of being up for elimination. He just, he just didn't want to do it anymore. I could see the way John Boy did it. Because he said his piece, and he came at it. But he didn't quit. He was going to let Search decide. 100 Gs is not enough for me to sell out for wealth. I'm here to be number one, but it's not for them checks, kid. I told y'all I'd get rid of both of y'all if you didn't listen. John Boy, I need those sneakers. It's time for you to step off. Sully and John Boy were just intent on not dissing. And they just started as, like, snitching. I mean, come on. What, what, what we're like, we're not going to battle. I wanted John Boy to go home. He was next on my list. I mean, they have their reasons, I guess, but it's just disappointing. I wanted to see everyone represent. If not for themselves, for hip hop. It's almost like, do we have a choice when we decide to be an MC? Some people, this is all they have to live. To live. To like, seriously breathe. We have responsibility to hip hop as soon as you pick up that mic. Otherwise, get out. Step off. In the ice ice chamber, like, things change a little bit when you do go in there. You know what I'm saying? You do have to step I up. I haven't been in there, so I don't know. And yes, I think, we know, Just. And I think that If I have to drag you in there, I will. Just Ron, man, he's gotten through this with never having to feel, you know, finish an elimination. So I can't even really judge his MCing, really. I thought, not to go on your lines or anything, but the cigarettes was where you went a little easy on him. Because I no, thought you yeah. was going to say Sully was outside with the bitches. John Brown came half-assed on his rhyme. I'm on the monitor, you know, trying to get the clip. Sully back outside. He let us smoke cigarettes. Dog, I watered down the f out of my verse, son. I think John Brown should have went too, being that he sugar-coated his insults. And being that he's such an ass, I know he has it in him. Yo, you've got mayo. Woo! Guess what? You guys got a couple of challenges coming your way, and here's a clue for your first one. Don't touch that dial. It's time to fine tune your skills or get tuned out. <laughs> we doing a radio interview. Search said, tune in or it will get tuned out. I was instantly, we're going to a radio station for me. Good morning. Hot 97, the official number one station for hip hop and R&B. That's Hot 97. Biggest rap station in the country. Good morning. Miss Jones is New York's sassiest radio personality. Her raw, tell it like it is persona. Y'all are whack! Made her a favorite amongst the Big Apple's morning drive time listeners. You listen to the show? I do. Michael Sean, DJ Envy. What's up, guys? We wound up at Hot 97 on the morning show with Miss Jones. I knew personally from being from New York it was gonna be a rough experience because she really goes to people hard. So, we've got four up-and-coming rappers. They're white rappers, all vying for the crown of the, I guess, the, the next white rapper. Please introduce yourself to our audience. What's happening then? It's your boy Shamrock from Atlanta, Georgia. And he's got grills in his mouth. What up, it's Persia, representing Far Rockaway Queen. 
What's pimping name is John Brown, the king of the birds. Hallelujah, holla bass. What up? It's Just Rhyme, AR-15 crew, Los Angeles. Uh, white, black, brown, unity. Uh, power to poor people everywhere. Oh, boy. Oh, 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 this is gonna be fun. <laughs> All right, so this is what we gonna do. We gonna each pick up items, and y'all gotta freestyle about the item that we pick up. Because a true MC can freestyle at any given moment about any given item. Do you agree? Yes. We gonna test. All right. All right. All right. This is Shamrock from ATL, y'all. This is All Lip right. Gloss. It's uh, Lip Gloss for a uh, female boss. It's uh, Miss Jones's her home. Okay. You got the Blackberry cell. Let me borrow that called ATL. Right. Tell right. them right. that I'm died and went to heaven. I'm up here at 107. Oh, no, you're not. Boy, Scott, oh. get the hell out. Oh, oh. Wah, wah. Damn. Come on, Patrick. I apologize. <laughs> Rap about this. Yeah. Grab the mic. And get on the mic. Come on. My lyrics and my passion are the my passion in his cell phone. <laughs> Persia on the cell, direct call to hell, and I'm straight up in the studio and I... Uh... Go ahead, bro. Wow, that's too The loud. people who yeah. get sent out the studio. In natural Persia fashion, you know, she fell off. I think that Persia cracks under pressure. JB. Go ahead. Um, yeah. Catch you with a magazine, you know the theme, I'm all on the scene, a hot 97, been recording since 97, they want a 16, I spit a hot 97, oh, back on the boulevard. This is really awful. Mm -hmm. We have to go back in the lab and recast. How much money is in the budget to recast? Let's do this, I'll give you something. Uh-oh. Okay. Yeah, all right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Yeah, check it out. Uh, yeah, AR-15, stand up. We got some flowers, man. Showers coming down. Props to the New York town. The city, man. It's off the chain. Put people first. Definitely before profit. I'm dropping it, man, and never staying off topic. <laughs> that was a freestyle. Was it? I'm glad it was free. Miss Jones gave all of us a hard time. I didn't take um, uh, much of it to heart. For those of y'all just joining us, we got four cats up here. They all white, and they all think that they are the next thing, I suppose. And they prepared rhymes that they want our audience to hear. And then the, I guess the audience can better judge. Who's going first? Persian. All right. They say I curse like I'm hexed and I spit like a dude. I rep my set to my death. How will eat your food? And ain't no chick from Queens that ever spit this hard. I'm tired of these dry ass chicks that can't spit. You want me? Come see me, you yak knock trick. Hello? Good morning. I, w I want to make a comment, Josie. I understand they doing their thing, but in the words of y'all, leave this to us. You're never going to make it. Don't ever show up at one of my shows, because you will. Don't buy my CD either. When you hear it on the radio, don't sing it. <laughs> Who's next? I'll go. This is Just Ryan, AR-15, Los Angeles. I'm slick, dude. I'm hip to the cracks in the... Wait. Yeah, go ahead. You didn't sound slick. Okay. Like, work on your delivery. All right. <clears throat> I'm slick, dude. Nah. No. I'm slick, dude. I'm slick, dude. There you go. Right. I'm slick, dude. I'm hip to the cracks in the system victims usually slip through. I feel the Black Panthers and what self-defense do. So let me see your hands and do what these gents do. The time is now. The power is ours. Let's get behind the black folks. We'll topple the towers. Yeah. Right. Who's, who's next? I'll go. <laughs> OK. Now, y'all should have known when I came, use info change, I didn't do things the same. The white boy from the South with the mouse put it out with the class, he know what I'm about. And if y'all don't like me, do me, boo me, but see me on the street and won't say to me, I give up. What you say, just pray them flow don't ever go over your way. All right, Shamrock. Good morning, what's your comment? Um, they probably make it somewhere, just not on, in New York. They probably will make it. Oh, yes, you're right. And lastly, we got JB. John Brown, king of the burbs, hallelujah, holla back. Hallelujah, holla back. <laughs> I'm a general, hand on my genitals, sipping on chemicals, on identical mental tools. Make sure I never lose. Soldier as a team, now I'm all behind the scene. Make decisions with the team, throwing money in my jeans. You can get it with us. Or oh, watch us get it. Pay that Delaware tax so them cops don't get it. Play okay. your position. <laughs> Woo! Let's go to the phones. Let the callers be reckless. What's your comment? Yo, all of them need to get out. <laughs> I love the hate. I love the hate. If people love you or if people hate you, you're doing something right. If you're just a monotone, it's just a flat line, then it's like, mm, what's going on? You need to add some salt. And when we come back, since y'all want to be rappers, y'all got to find out, y'all got to let everybody know who y'all going to have beef with. Because every good MC has beef with another one. Of course. Right? Just like Clear Channel, you know what I'm saying? What you say? You said we got beef just like Clear Channel. Hallelujah, holla back. What you mean by that? 
Yo, it's self-explanatory. I feel like you're trying to get a little slick out your mouth. No this way. is not a clear channel station. Apparently, not only was I plugging a competitor company, but they also were in litigation with them, which I was unaware of. We are in the fight of our lives, so we're not trying to draw no attention to that. Do not come in my house ever trying to disrespect me or my craft or what I do. Now get out. I love you. Get out. I don't want your love. Get out. Damn. Coming up, Persia rebroadcasts her hate for John Brown loud and clear. I'm trying to spread my love. Don't nobody wants your love. It's no part of nothing you say. Go. And will one rapper end up in critical condition? Do not come in my house ever trying to disrespect me or my craft or what I do. Now get out. You a clown. Hallelujah, holla back. I'm speechless. It really took the life out of me. He's just all about hype and propaganda in the place of his talent, because he ain't got none. He got thrown out because he used our airwaves to be disrespectful to another radio, I guess, what, conglomerate? That's not what, we're not here to try and be disrespectful. Other stations do what they do. Woo! The ghetto revival is in the building. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Sorry about dumbass. He's just being complete and utterly disrespectful to people who have no reason to bring us into their radio station. This is the most respected hip-hop station in the nation. My whole visit just crashed and burned. Because of me? Yeah. Word? They're in a lawsuit now, so that didn't help. You talk so much and the same stuff and it makes no sense that people just don't want to listen to you no more. I could be totally wrong, but I'm just trying to spread jewels the way I think they are. And if they're not oh, jewels, no, I don't want to listen guys. to what comes after that. Please, Jesus, make him stop. Ooh. It's like dipped in bull The whole thing just like took the life out of me. Smile all you want, because you bull Hype and propaganda, and you like it because you like the shine. And after this, we could do this somewhere else, and we'll see if you're smiling. Emotions, emotions. I'm on a public campaign, and when I talk about this as being a promotion opportunity, that makes these rappers, like, go in a frenzy. Yo, you're an emotional woman. I'm emotional because you disrespecting what I do, what I breathe. John Brown, he's not what hip-hop embraces. He doesn't have it in him. It's not in his veins. It's, it's something he puts on in the morning. He puts on his rapper suit. I'm trying to spread my love. Don't nobody want your love, your fake ass jewels. It's no part of nothing you say. Therefore, you will never make it. I don't give a what your business plan is. Hey, yo, just remember your Shut rhymes. Shut the up, elimination, you, you know what I'm saying? Oh, my bad. I got a bad memory. That was his comeback, I guess. That was his emotion to say, oh, why don't you just mem go memorize your lines? All you put yourself as is a lyricist, but you can't remember your raps? Come on, man. I'm not even a rapper and I can remember my raps. Yeah, baby. Hallelujah. Remember that. You're not a rapper. Remember I'm not that. a rapper. I'm an I'm a entity. It's You're not an entity. If you was an entity for the seven years you was building this book, you wouldn't say you was working paycheck to paycheck. You got this scheme to get money? Where the is the money, yo? Persia is very ignorant about, you know, the business side. I mean, honestly, I really feel like Persia has three verses. Literally. She's not a thoroughbred. I love the hate. Basking in it. Basking in it. Basking in it. I mean, the whole thing about John Brown is, at this point, I still don't know if I'm going to have to work with him for one of these last few challenges. And if I do get paired up, I'm just going to put it aside and do it. Yeah. same time like I would never hang out with him or anything after this. I really try to stay neutral when there's arguments in the house. I'm not trying to dwell in that. I'm trying to write rhymes and win a competition. Yo, what's that under my bed? Head. 
virgin? How do you know it was her? Well, it wasn't you, it wasn't Shema. You were Chad Shema? Yeah. What did he say? Yeah. Did you ask me? Why'd you do that? Every man for himself. Mm. Good morning. Today, we're going to work on your appearance. As this competition gets tighter, bottom line is y'all going to have to get gully. Thug gully. A big part of hip-hop right now is the thug image. As aspiring rap artists, you have to at least understand what it's about so you can stay relevant in the hip-hop game. So I brought somebody with me today who's going to help you tighten up your looks. His name is Roger McKenzie. He styled everyone from Buster Rhymes to Missy Elliott. This is Roger. Hey, what's up, y'all? How y'all doing? All right, man, now let's talk about the thug element in hip-hop. So the thug element is derived from the jails back in the day. It says when you were given clothes in jail and sneakers and stuff, you weren't given laces or belts and stuff like that. And hip hop took it and made it into something positive. So I'm here to do that for you guys. And I'm telling you right now, it's crucial because it plays a key part in the next challenge you guys are gonna go through. So please show them their clothes. I'm gonna sit right here and watch this whole transformation. Let me have you up here for a minute. I brought these things for you. Okay. Roger gave me gear that he thought reflected Los Angeles. White tee, black dickies. He also gave me a big gold chain, which I usually don't wear, but as Roger told me, gold is in. This is for you. I think a velour suit might be the right element. Let's do it. You could rock that, right? I'm sure you will. They gave me some sort of like tacky, you know, jumpsuit, whatever. I don't know if they were really trying to be really genuine stylists or they were just trying to do it in a funny way. Persia, my dear. You got you like really cool cargos right there, nice white beater. You got the little fur thing. To me, being a thug is a state of mind. So the clothes, no, they were what people think thug is. You got the grills, the yeah. whole nine yards. I thought some baggy shorts would be cool with you. It's me. It was kind of funny because I came in there wearing shorts down to my ankles and a big black t-shirt. And when I walked out there, I was wearing shorts down to my ankles and a big black t-shirt. So you guys all dressed, which means you're ready for this next challenge. Stand up, come with me outside. Oh boy. Like a welcome you to the first ever white rapper. Thug challenge. Now, for this challenge, I brought somebody very special. Somebody with true thug experience. Woo -woo! Coming up, is the thug challenge too rough for one of these rappers? And when the going gets tough, the tough get flowing at the elimination challenge. My memory or my or my choking doesn't get a hold of me, and it's a wrap for John Brown. For more exclusive clips and more inside scenes on the White Rapper Show, you might want to check out the V Spot, VH1.com. Now, for this challenge, I brought somebody very special, somebody with true thug experience. Will you please give a warm welcome to my man Saigon? <laughs> Saigon has the streets on lock, flooding hood state to state with gritty tales of his hard knock life. Surfboard in Saigon, which was exciting for me. I mean, he's, he's New York right now. He's in the streets. He's like the realest person I think is in the game. Now, this is a young man who could really talk about the thug lifestyle and the thug mentality. When did you first go into the system? When I was 14 years old. I ain't really come out until I was 22, so I spent the majority of my teenage years being incarcerated by playing with guns, you know, shooting people. A lot of these rappers never really lived it, but they try to glamorize it like that, that kind of lifestyle is cool. And it's not a message you want to put out there anyway to the kids, you know what I mean? So what we're going to do is put you through a mock thug challenge. You're going to run our version of uh, an obstacle course, if you will.
Now that you've seen the disclaimer, I also want you to know that you're each going to be timed running the course separately. First thing you're going to do is catch a case. All rise. Off that building. That bandana hood and villain is going to throw three empty cases into a shopping cart. Once you catch the three cases, you're going to go out the door and push the weight up the hill to the bodega. At the bodega on the corner, there'll be a rat. You know what we do to rats? Pound on them rats. When you beat up the rat pinata, it's gonna drop dimes. Pick up two dollars worth and go inside the bodega, go see my man Jose. Give him the two dollars and he's gonna give you a bolt cutter. You're gonna run down a block, see a low rider bike, then boost the bike. Ride the bike back over here fastest person to run the race wins. A lot of rappers glamorize thug life. Some even create a fake persona to gain street cred. I know none of y'all would do that. I'm not a thug. You know, I'm a good dude. I'm a hustler. And I'm in the streets, but I don't pull triggers. I don't make threats on people's life like that. Okay, Persia, you up, mama? I'm gonna beat the pinata like he was John Brown. She was saying, I'm gonna hit the pinata like it's John Brown. You know, it's like any time she has an aspect to play me out, she loves to do that. Ready, set, go. Now this is a woman who definitely knows how to catch a case. She looks like she caught a few There cases. we go, yeah, she definitely caught a couple of cases. Oh, that's good. Cool. Oh, three cases. Wow, skills in pushing weight. I rode the cart actually halfway to conserve my energy because I knew I'd be running up a hill. Yeah, this running thing is not working. Not running no more. You had to beat that rat with a baseball bat. That was the fun part. Oh, look at that. I get down to the bike with the lock cutters. And I never used lock cutters before. And I cut through the lock. Like, you're supposed to pop the chain. I never stole nobody's bike before. I just wanted to give up. I wanted to throw the card out of my way and just sit down, <laughs> wait for the icy lady to come by. I was like, I, I gotta finish this, I'm not a quitter. On the way back, I was just cruising and just focused. I was uh, ready to win by a big margin to let them know that Just Ryan was serious about this game. I hope y'all got that. Three minutes, 41 seconds. I am flabbergasted. <laughs> Yo, that was, that was wild right there. Cruising. 454. How was that, Shan? Hard as <laughs> Thank you. It was hot as hell. I snapped the bike, got on the bike. The bike was the easiest thing to do. Oh, and here she comes. Come on, Persia, you can do it. 6.31. Got to the finish line and had a heart attack. Just wanted to pour some water, drown myself. I really wanted the cooler over my head. Couldn't breathe, it was hot, so I went inside. And the winner of the Thug Obstacle Course Challenge is Just Rhymes. You killed it, bro. Congratulations. I'm kind of looking around, seeing if everyone was fine. The only person that wasn't with us was Persia. So we really started to worry. Hey, Persia, stay there. You OK? I went to the bathroom to lay down, and when I got there, I couldn't move. Are you OK, Persia? Here, I want you to get out.
Got real serious and took a different tone, and everybody was real worried. She was strapped up. She had an oxygen thing on her. That was a bad look, son. She didn't have her eyes open. It was just really, really scary. I was worried at the end of the day, you know, I don't want to ever see, you know, somebody really, really get, you know, screwed up like that. I was at the hospital. They said I was dehydrated. They took me to the, the walk-in section. They were like, oh, we don't have your paperwork. Can you go get it? I figured, well, if I'm going to go get my paperwork, I might as well just leave. I'm fine. There's no way I'm going out without a fight. Glad to see you back, Ma. How do you Very feel? Much. I'm fine. Good, yeah? Mm -hmm. What happened? What did they say? I just need to breathe. So how did you Sent get a big out girl the up the hill. Like I walked out. Wow. <laughs> Pulled the two pot out the spot. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, just Ryan, come over here. The winner of the Thug Obstacle Course Challenge is just Ryan. Well, I got a very, very, very special surprise for you. I'm going to give you a thug's night out on the town. All right? All right. All right. And I got a, a very special person that you're going to be hanging out with tonight. All right. Mr. What What Man himself, the super thug himself, N-O-R-E. Oh! Hailing from the killer streets of Queens, New York, N-O-R-E brings his own brand of hardcore slang to the rap game, either making hits with the Neptunes or enjoying crossover reggaeton success. The super thug's career is untouchable. I'm going to allow you to pick one of your housemates to have dinner on top of New York with N-O-R-E. Wow. OK? All right. All right. Well, take your time, you know. Top of New York. Top of New York, man. man you got to go with the businessman, my man John Brown. Wow! What a pick. John Brown, come on down. John Brown, man. Woo! I was just like, what the hell? Like, those two, they don't even know how to chop it up and get wild like that, because that's noise. That's what he does. Fall back and go get dressed and, and get ready for a thug night out, all right? Respect OK, you, no sir. problem, no right. problem. Y'all, too, enjoy the house, and I will holler at y'all later, all right? Good night, y'all. I was only cooking for you and me anyway. <laughs> oh, my God. I just really wanted a nice break for a second. And just, God bless his heart, he brought me back from the dead. Nori's in for a serious treat right now. Me and you. <laughs> We're going to be talking instead of me tripping out. You do the dude yes, that won? Yeah. All right. That's, right. That's your Appreciate man. It. That's my man. Yo, he won, yo. That's the dude who won. I want to see Just get drunk off his ass and sleep with a groupie. Which one of y'all don't drink? I, I try. I'll have a drink with y'all. Toast, have man. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh -huh. Yeah, I usually have one drink, you know? Oh, I work a lot drink. with youth, and I kind of do a little responsible. But oh, yeah, okay. so, but I pay respects, you know? The interaction with NORE was incredible. From entering the hotel to coming out on this balcony overlooking the Empire State Building, the whole thing was VIP. So what, do you, what kind of uh, artist you, you consider yourself? I mean, I'm a, I'm a hip hop artist, you know? There's plenty of hip hop artists. So, yeah. like, what kind? What, what category do you fall well, 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 my name, you know, is John Brown, and I'm the king of the suburbs. Um, king of the suburbs? Yeah. I like the suburbs. Yeah, right? You know, and um, I work with, you know, company Ghetto Revival. Oh, my God, I just realized two of them. Him reviving the ghetto and him with the power to the people. How about you? Right now, uh, I would say for my company, what we're trying to do, it falls into what I'm doing, is uh, we're trying to be the, the international leader in tour booking for socially conscious artists, artists that want to, you know, move on a message and uh, activists, you know, foot soldiers in the street. I cannot wait to see this yeah. What's great is that I'm going to hear about it, because it's Queens, it's left right. Why are those ask my people, like, the real opinion yeah. of, yeah, son, these boys talk my <laughs> ear off. They was pitching this ghetto revival. This guy's ready for TV, man. You know, so that's what he, got the, he got the bluff game ready. <laughs> no, it's not bluff, man. We're Yo. doing it. We're doing it. Y'all ready? All right, thanks for great presence. Here we go. Be well. All right, y'all. Cool. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you very much yeah. for this dinner. Thank you. Thank you.
<laughs> what? I'm telling you, son. What's up, y'all? Brought you a little present. Ooh. A little moet. When I came home, I mean, I'm sure I can only imagine the amount of hate fest that was going on between Shamrock and Persia against me, and they just can't stand me. You're a nice MC, but the more you talk about the business, the more you plug that, it just seems false. I think the, the misinterpretation is like, because I talk about other things, that means that takes away from my MC game. It really does. Right, but, but I'm still here. Shamrock kind of got sick of it, sick of the lies. The same things that I've been sick of, I think Shamrock finally just saw it for what it was and it just pissed them off. But you're telling me that I don't come from like my like false or something. That's how it's interpreted by you. Do you really think it's just me? Am I the only person who who's coming to you like this? Yeah. You know, I feel like Shamrock, he's a follower more than a leader. And I feel like he kind of got brainwashed by Persia. I'm presenting myself to the world as a rapper who already has his business game straight. You got your business game so straight, mm -hmm. your rap game looks fraudulent. Like, I'm, I'm just trying to be a leather skin right now. You feel me? Like, I could easily break down and try to, like, show my emotions about but I'm not trying to. If you show emotions, man, that means you're human. Right now, you seem like a robot, dude. I'm not showing you who I am. So how are we supposed to feel you? Because you're not my brother. So, so every time you said, I have broken my heart, my brother, and I'm not your brother, so you fake, you fraud. We are in a competition right now, bro. Okay, you just call me bro, but you said I'm not your brother. Yo, do you understand? What the f man? Your language is fraudulent, dog. You know, I know I'll be vindicated. You know, I roll with straight up serious people, man. Cheers. <laughs> Elimination time. When we have eliminations, I don't try to out lyrical, empirical, miracle it. You know, I'm just stick to what I know. I feel like luck definitely had something to do with me making it this far, but I also feel like I've been a really good team player. With me for this challenge is Prince Paul. What's going on, y'all? Okay, this elimination challenge, you're all up for elimination. As you know, this whole challenge was about thugism, and this elimination challenge is no different. In fact, I'm gonna thug it up a notch, all right? Hold on one second. What you going for? You're not going for the, for the peace. As you know, this whole challenge was about thugism, and this elimination challenge is no different. In fact, I'm gonna thug it up a notch, all right? Hold on one second. What you going for? You're not going for the, for the peace. Inside my Thugola box is a set of four crayons, and in each of those crayons is a famous nursery rhyme. You'll do a thugged out version of that nursery rhyme. Just rhyme, since you won, come get a crayon. When you pick it out, I want you to show everybody. Picks the baby blue one, okay? Just rhyme, pat a cake. John Brown, step up. Okay, see? John Brown, Humpty Dumpty. Lady, Persia, come on. Good, okay. Let's see what you got. Persia got Jack Be Nimble. Certainly last but not least, Shamrock. May I, may I pull this one for you? Pause. Thank you, sir. Stand over here. Old Mother Hubbard. Nice. You'll have one hour in the ice ice chamber to write your rhymes. Somebody's going home. We're going to impeach a resident. Three of you will be left, which means one of the three is going to win $100,000. All right? Let's go to the ice ice chamber. If my memory or my choking doesn't get a hold of me, then it's a wrap for John Brown. Because there's no way in hell that he's a better MC than I am. I've been through more eliminations than anybody who's in the final four right now. The only competition in this situation is myself. From what I had heard about the Ice Ice Chamber was that it was just a pressure cooker. But to me, it wasn't as intimidating as other people thought it would be for, for Just Rhyme. Every previous challenge I had been in, I was the strongest person. And I think at this point, everybody takes me seriously because I've gotten better each performance. Hi, Chuck. Come on out. Today's elimination challenge 
was your responsibility to take one of the most beloved nursery rhymes and thug it out. John Brown? Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall with his hungry monkey looking for broads. He hollered at a shorty and she sat on his lap. Then he took her to the telly, she did the booty clap. Then Humpty Dumpty went back to the wall, got his hands on his nuts and then on his waist, bumping ice TPE in third base. Humpty Dumpty couldn't get off the block till them stick up boys came. All you heard was a pop. All the paramedics and all the anesthetics couldn't stop the blood. So the grave's where he's headed. Okay, thank you. Shamrock. See, old Mother Hubbard had went to her cupboard, but she didn't have to eat. Her dog is on the couch, dogging her ass out. He said, bitch, I need a bone and some meat. So she came up with a scheme how to get that cream. She was finna work the strip. Now, when she was walking home, she bought a bone and some Got back after 11, threw the bone in his lap, hit him with a and said, I hope all dogs go to heaven. Bye. All right, man, thank you. Persia, step up. All right, go ahead. Oh, boy. Purge be silly and purge be slick. Yeah, you know, purge the Can't deny my witty flow, and if rap don't work, I still got Creative mind and never simple. I know what you said, but watch me pimp you. The fearful lie and the heartless go. You were fraudulent rapping, it's all for the show. Persia, get you and pull your card. Persia, get you, pull your card. Let the world know you a bitch at heart. Oh, you got to hit me again. Persia, get you a bitch at heart. I don't know you a bitch at heart. Take a deep breath. Take your time. I get it. And then right here, I lose it. Don't lose it. You hustle every day. Don't lose it. It's too important. You ready? Do your thing. Persia's silly and Persia's slick. Yeah, you know, Persia. It's gone. All right, my fall back. Just run. Patty cake, rat tat tat, you fake Jack, Humpty, and Hubbard. I told you to ship the shipment, but instead you dipped into it. I'm hip to it. I'm the baker's man. And here was the plan. Tell Humpty to sit on the wall and watch for police. The heat came. He freaked and he fell. Jack passed out, puffed on an a But the addicts, the addicted to fame. I told you Jack, Hubbard, Humpty, it wasn't a game. Blah, blah, blah. All right, man, thank you. Persia. Get up here. It's not gonna come out. I blank. I blank every single time. All right, guys. Fall back. We're gonna deliberate. Come back with our decision. Talk to me about Shamrock. One thing I like about Shamrock is he consistently got better. Like his performance was on point. He was practically flawless. All in all, he did a good job. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about John Brown. His style threw me off for a second. But then later on, I, I kind of fell into it. And, and he thugged it out and gave it a lot of appeal. Just rhyme and, and pat a cake. Maybe three of the four lines rhymed. I was just lost. And he is not that thug dude. I know that he tried with the blow, 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 but I mean, it's almost comical oh, you watching know, him do that. Yeah, you know. I was about to say, that was mad corny. Like, if anything, I'm like, it made me embarrassed. I'm like, you know, he didn't do that. Anyway, talk to me about Persian. How could she give up? I mean, you gave her plenty of chances. I mean, front it, do something. Like, just don't sit there and, like. You know, you're right. I think rule number one is you don't give up. Right. But the 10 bars that she kicked were still doper than anything that came out of Just Ron's mouth. All right, well, I think we know what our decision is. Yeah. Let's start with Shamrock. Prince Paul, what'd you think? One thing I'll give Shamrock credit for is through all the criticisms we gave him, he actually acted like he listened to what we said and improved. Overall, outstanding, outstanding. Fall back, you're safe. Let's talk about John Brown's performance. The one thing I liked about your rhyme is you put Humpty in all sorts of mad situations. He was getting lap dances, he was on the block. Loved that. What I really liked was he dies in the end. I appreciate that. You followed the whole format. You're showing the heart of an MC, so you're safe. You can fall back. All right, Persia, just run, step up and step in. 
Just Rhymes, I like your passion a great deal, but I think you're very fortunate that you didn't go in the ice chamber earlier because I don't think you would have lasted the first ice ice chamber elimination. That rhyme was horrible. But your passion and your energy, your showmanship, that's what saved the rhyme. Because her 10 bars crushed you, crushed you. And the only thing that's really holding you back is that you quit. Because the 10 bars were hot, Jack be nimble, but I'm that bitch. That is gangster. That is what makes you you, but you cannot quit. So this show ends where the last one left off. And I'm so sorry, Persia, but I need your sneakers. It's time for you to step off, Ma. <laughs> I blanked again. I don't know what the problem is. Don't know how to fix it. I guess my nerves just get the best of me, and I lose it. <sighs> Only message I have is for Shamrock to whip everybody's ass. What you're about to face coming up for this 100 G's is going to test a grown man's spirit, his drive, and his skill. Do not walk in here whack. Good night, guys. Long live Far Rock, baby. Long live Persian. Sweetheart, time to go. Gonna be hugging the block for so long, baby. It's time to bounce. Next on the White Rapper Show. I need you guys to pack because we're going to Detroit. Woo! The final three are headed to the mecca of white hip hop where they shack up at a local trailer park. The White House Part 2. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Black. And travel many miles to meet up with rap renegades. Say hello to a hip hop legend, especially in Detroit, Kid Rock. I was like, whoa. And battle lyrical warriors as well as their own fears at Detroit's legendary St. Andrews Hall. Your shoes, your shirt don't match. Look like this closet done kicked your ass. You ain't a rapper just because you got a MySpace page. With only three rappers left and a hundred grand on the line, who will be the next to step off? Next Monday. It's time to take you guys to the mecca of white hip hop. The white rappers at the 313. I need you guys to pack because we're going to Detroit. I'm ready to prove myself. But the city's not showing them love. I'm meeting filet mignon, gray poupon. They said you a little dude. They not talking about height. Oh. For outsiders, if you're not from the D, you're not getting love. In the end, someone's leaving bro. This show ends where the last one left off. It's an all new white rapper show. Step off. Next Monday at 10, only on VH1. For additional scenes from this episode, go to vspot at vh1.com. Yes, master. Again. <laughs>